And then once you figure out why you're doing it and you understand that the way that you think about it and how often it occurs affects the quality and quantity of your practice, then, so now we're all in. We have found what we enjoy. For me, it's more so just video games in general allow me to express myself and compete in a healthy way. Watch a lot of team sports. I root for my teams. In general, the jobs that I involve myself in recently, it's been professional kitchens, are very competitive. And it's not just, you know, me versus the other stations. That's ridiculous because we're on the same team. And also it's not back of house versus front of house as much as everyone that has worked in a restaurant just laughed when they heard me say that. Because it's still, that is still so fucked up. And anyone that laughed that heard me say that, they understand why it's so fucked and how it gets that way and how bad it is for that situation and for everyone involved. It's super fucked up. And I get why it occurs, but I really wish it didn't. But that's just me. Hey, you know, some people enjoy it. But when you are, we have what we want. It allows us to express ourselves in the right way. And it gives you what you need in your own way. And you think about that. I'm sure you already have been. What do we do next? How do we begin practicing? First things first, we got to make it real. One of the things that I realized is it's over a very long period of time, my whole life. I say very long is relative. It's pretty much just, how do I put this? You got to make it real. Just always just keeping it up top. There's this weird barrier that I like can't really, I haven't put enough thought into it to identify it just yet, but If you, there's something to just saying it out loud or the repetition of write it down, make it real, make it physical, make it concrete. Don't allow the idea to just be an idea floating around up top. Put it somewhere. I have so many fucking sticky notes just literally all around my apartment. I... I don't even remember all of the places that I've put them. Just write it down. Make it real. Do something. You don't have to say it to someone else. You don't have to, but say it to yourself. Say it out loud. That's um, in my mind. It's part of like how and why therapy works. Is like internalizing everything doesn't allow for the idea to become a reality to you in a certain aspect. And I know I can't completely, it's like something about it that I can't identify myself, that I haven't identified yet, that I don't, there's a part of it that when it stays within you, It doesn't feel like it has transferred steps yet, I'll say in a way. Like it, it's still stuck on a prior stage of development until you actually, actually make it real. Whatever real is to you. And it doesn't even have to just be like something that, okay, I wrote it. Now I am beholden to this idea and I have to. It's mine now, and I, it's going everywhere with me, and I, I wear it. Like, 
just see what it feels like. You write it down and and it's in there and you pull it out one day and think to yourself, eh, I don't like that. You fucking just didn't like how that felt. Didn't like the way that that became real. It wasn't for me. Sometimes you just have to write it down. See how it feels. Write down something. Write down a regiment for your new exercise routine. And just feel how that feels to look at it. Because it's different when it's 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 100 you know, roll around on the grounds. It's different than when you think about, I don't really feel like doing 100. I want to roll around on the ground 100 times right now. Because when it's not, it's just something like, when it's, a, when it's up top, when it's all internal, it's just something that you just kind of, you're just flirting with the concept in a way. You're still just kind of, eh, it's touch and go. It's, eh, what is that? Write it down and make it real and feel it. And then once you write it down, do a part of it. Even better, take it one step further. We're going to cheat a little. As soon as you write it down, just do it. As soon as you write something down, if you can, just do it. Just do real quick. How long is it going to take? I want to do... If I... What's a good place? 10 push-ups. 10 push-ups. Be right back. Well, I should have started with like, and to my own horn, should have been like 20. So let me amend that. 20 push ups. I could do that. I could easily do that every hour. I could do that every 30 minutes. How many 30 minutes are in the day? 24? 24 times 20? Math? I don't really want to say it wrong. Is it 400 something? 480. 480 push ups in a day. That remains to be seen that I'm going to get to the finish line, but <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't that hard for me. And it really is made up of all of these small things. Like 10 push ups a day, that's the fucking 20 push ups a day, 20 push ups an hour, 20 push ups every three hours. That's 60 push ups in a work day. Imagine if you did 60 push ups every day just while you're at work. How long do you think it would take to just start fucking swelling up like fucking Arnie? How long would you honestly? It's just small stuff. Make it real. 20 push ups. I'm just going to keep doing 20 push ups. Just bust them out. Obviously, your 20 push ups can be whatever you want. You want to hit fucking five minutes of knitting and just. Bust that fucking sweet ass sweater out. Nail it. Dude. You want to practice being the best fucking. I don't know. What is a, a knitter? Is there a. There's got to be a word for uh, someone that knits. What is the person that is a, a knitter? Okay, it is a knitter person who knits <laughs> it is okay that's the way it was that simple you want to be the best knitter you could possibly be fucking please do that's two thumbs up from me 
what the fuck ever. I don't care. But you have to. If you care about it, bam, let's get it done. But if you don't care about it, you're not going to make it real. Make it real. If you care, you're going to make it real. If you don't care, you're not going to make it real. And that should tell you what you need to know. Make it real. Make it a calendar. Make it a journal. Use an app, even if you have to. That's not the best. I like real physical, though. There's something to be said for writing something down, which is something that I haven't actually addressed. But it's a part of why I do these videos the way that I do them is you should be the one taking notes. I'm not going to put on the screen all the, over the fucking place everything that I think that you should know. It's all important. But it's what you pick up from it. And it's what's important to you. And it's what catches your ear. It's why you pay attention to the parts that you pay attention to. And you realizing that is what's going to make it real. It's what's going to solidify in your mind as a lesson that you actually learned. Write it for yourself. Evaluate the important part for yourself. You tell me what's important to you. It shouldn't be anyone else. Discussing that with other people that are involved with a field, absolutely a great idea. Why not? But what they have to say about it needs to be taken with a grain of salt as well because everybody's experience in whatever field it is is going to be different. What does it mean to you? And how real have you made it? Have you made it real yet? That's step number 1.5. If it's not real, so what are you going for? What actually is it then? I don't know. You tell me. Your dream. Start somewhere. Make it real. So then now it's real. Thank God. Hallelujah. It's real now. You understand your dreams and your hopes. You know what you're going for. You say, okay, this is it. This is what I want. This is what I am going to get. This is it. How do you start practicing? That's a good question. What do you need to get better at? Have you identified what you need to get better at? Have you identified properly where you are at? I've talked about that a whole lot. That is extremely important. Have you ditched the ego? You've made it real. You were going to be the ultimate Pokemon master of all time. Ash Ketchum in the flesh. Let's go. So what did Ash Ketchum have to do to get better as a Poke Master? That's actually a great analogy because most people on the planet know who Ash Ketchum is. <laughs> but also his journey directly, like in case anyone was paying attention to Pokemon the whole time, he was basically learning how to care more about people and how Pokemon are people too and how everyone is important and everyone has a story to tell and everyone's feelings actually matter in the big picture and that everyone is just trying to become the best version of their own selves and everyone has their own Pokemon and their own style and that that is something to be respected and that there's always a new lesson to learn when interacting with a new opponent as well as your old rivals. So Pokemon is actually <laughs> the perfect allegory. <laughs> oh shit. They were just trying to tell you to be a good person and love everyone around you. Oh, Pokemon is so deep, man. It's so deep. But actually, that's pretty much it. So what did Ash Ketchum have to learn? that everyone has their own feelings and that you have to respect the people that you're working with to get the best out of everyone and all that stuff. So that's fine. But in a more functional aspect, he needed to figure out the strengths and weaknesses 
of his team. He needed to figure out what Pikachu was all about. He needed to figure out what all of his Pokemon were about. He was constantly figuring out strengths and weaknesses. That is it. That is the point. To boil it all the way down, to reduce it even past. Strengths and weaknesses. What are you actually good at? Not just like, oh, I'm fucking so sick at like, bro, like, you wouldn't fucking believe it. Like, I'm fucking, I nailed this fucking 36 no scope the other day, and that's why now I'm not so good. Like, I'm him. Like, I don't fucking care. That's not strengths and weaknesses. I don't, that doesn't mean anything. Do you actually have good aim? Be real. Probably not. I'm going to say probably not. What I would qualify as good aim is beyond most people, so I'm going to go with hedge my bets a little bit and say probably not. So first things first, you got to work on your aim. Second thing second. Once you have the precision to make the decision, what are you actually aiming at? Do you understand how to score? Whatever scoring looks like. Do you understand the most effective way to score? Do you even understand just the actual total limitations of the game? It is your understanding of your place within the game that is going to help you identify what you need to work on. Your natural advantages, your natural disadvantages. Everyone is starting somewhere. You may not have been starting and you may have this stuff pretty well identified, but I would go ahead and lean towards this stuff is under constant evaluation. So even if you think that you get it and you know where you're standing currently in all of this stuff, that work never ends. You did it the first time, do it again and again and again and again. And be honest, has your aim gotten worse? Why is that? Has it gotten better? Why is that? Are you identifying things fast enough? Is it, does it feel like the game is moving slower or faster than it was before? If the game feels like it's slowing down, I would take that as a sign of plenty of good things. And I would say that is just as much worthy of identification as what doesn't work and the game feeling slower. It really is. You have to be constantly evaluating both because your advantages over time as you practice certain things are going to change and your disadvantages over time as you lean away from certain aspects of the game to turn your attention towards other things to improve are going to become weaker. Constant evaluation and adjusting the scale. It doesn't matter if you are the best shot of all time, if it requires you to be in the worst position possible for you to hit that shot, what shot are you actually taking? Are you taking a good shot still? That's always, always constantly being evaluated. 